T, welcome to this Louis T Network exclusive UDFA Confidential. We're talking about long shots with a shot to make the 2023 Washington Commanders roster. I think this is a very unique year in which undrafted rookies will have a shot at making the back end of this roster. We're going in the order in which I think they're going to have a shot. We've already covered Kashmir Allen, who I think has the best shot of making this football team, has started out well in camp in, in the um, OTAs thus far. Here's another guy with a shot, and I think he has the second best odds of making the team as it stands right now. And I'm talking about offensive lineman Mason Brooks, who went undrafted out of Ole Miss. Let's take a look at his file and see why he may have a shot in making this football team. Confidential. So, Mason Brooks is 6'6", 307 pounds, 33 and 5'8 arms, so really 34-inch arms. He's a senior. He's really unique, and um, there's a lot of things that I have to say about Mason Brooks. He appeared in 55 games in his career, 23 starts, all at tackle for Western Kentucky, Um, You see him in an Ole Miss uniform. He played his first three years of his collegiate career um, for Western Kentucky and then transferred in his final year to Ole Miss um, after, you know, the quarterback situation. Um, You know, they had Bailey Zappi who was there. And once he left to the NFL, you know, Mason Brooks was like, let me let me leave as well and, 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 you know, go to a situation that may allow me to shine and uh, play in a conference where it's going to bolster my stock. That didn't really work out well for him. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. One of five players currently on Washington's roster from the 2023 East-West Shrine game. He was on the East-West Shrine roster. Kashmir Allen was. Andre Jones, the seventh-round pick out of um, um, out of uh, out of what is it, uh, Louisiana Lafayette, I believe, Raging Cajuns. And then you have Ricky Stromberg was there. And then you have another player. I want to say it was Tim Demorat, the quarterback out of um, Fordham, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But in any event, um, Given the second highest signing bonus, and this is why I think he's got a shot, right? There clearly was interest here. He was given the second highest signing bonus of any UDFA in the NFL this um, offseason. The highest payout for a UDFA was the Vikings giving $40,000 to Andre Carter, the second out of Army, who is an edge rusher. Um when you're giving out that kind of money, that means there was demand for the player. You had to outbid other teams. He had options. So that means other teams saw Mason Brooks as a guy that could potentially make their football team. You're not giving that kind of money up if you don't think the guy can make your football team. The Vikings committed $40,000 in a $300 base salary. That's not normal money for an undrafted uh, rookie. So... You think this guy's going to make your team is essentially what you're saying. Um, and, and so Washington committing that kind of money to Mason Brooks means that they really like him a lot. Maybe it was more so the attention he was getting from other teams that forced them to give him the money and not necessarily them believing he's going to make their team. But maybe they saw some traits that they felt like were very workable and they wanted to get their hands on them and they were willing to pay the price to do so. But Uh, Clearly, they saw something in him, and they were scouting the East-West Shrine game very heavily, and um, this was one of the guys that they sought after and ultimately got. So let's now get really deep into the file and into the classifieds on Mason Brooks. Confidential. So at 6'6", 307 with 34-inch arms, he's got really solid offensive linemen, uh, you know, size and length. He's... A, a guy, that's what you're looking for with the offensive line. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, you want guys with length. You want guys with some size on them, and he checks off both boxes. Um, a negative. Not a great athlete, lacks foot speed and lateral agility to recover or survive as a tackle in the NFL. So 
immediately upon watching his tape and <clears throat> most of it was western kentucky tape you immediately see that he's he's not a great athlete you know and um he lacks the foot speed to mirror faster defenders if he doesn't win early we'll talk about that a little bit um, later on but if he doesn't win early in the rep he's in trouble um lateral agility isn't a, a strength of his which is why he tends to open the door so to speak open the gate as they like to say opening up his hips to try to fend off speed rushers and that leaves the inside which is the gate right leaves that gate open to go inside and he doesn't have the lateral agility to then re redirect readjust and salvage the rep that guy once he gets inside mason brooks is beat he can't stop it so um he can't play tackle in the nfl if you ask me He's, he's got to be kicked inside the guard. Um, strong hands slash vice grips. When he locks his hands onto you and locks those arms out, you're done. And that was one of the things that I said. If he does his work early, he stands a chance. That's one of the um, things that you see is he's got very strong hands. And once he gets them on you and he locks you up, you're done. It's, it's over. It's a wrap. Um, he's, he packs a stall-inducing punch. That thing, I mean, it's very rapid, it's direct, it's very blunt, bow, right in your chest, stops you right in your tracks. Uh, so that good punch, and he resets it really well, doesn't have, you know, a rhythm and timing to his punch, so you can't time it up as a rusher and say, okay, every three seconds or, you know, every second he's going to stick that hand back out there. He, he throws those hands out there only when necessary, which is what you want from your tackle. And um, he has above average timing on that punch. So um, th those were some of the things that I was really impressed with. His hands, when he locks his arms out, once he has the grip, uh, it it's over. You're done. Uh, will stop his feet during his pass set. If he doesn't win early in the rep, has a tough time mirroring defenders. And that's what I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, he, he Too often when he punches, he'll stop his feet. Or when he tries to engage, he'll stop his feet. And he's not athletic enough to stop his feet and then restart them and still be able to win the rep. Once his feet stop, he's dead in the water. He's absolutely finished. And too many times, he'll stop his feet thinking he's done enough. That guy will go right around him. And now his quarterback's vacating the pocket and running for his life or getting sacked. So uh, that's something, again, that I think just makes me feel like he can't play on an island outside. Um, needs to do a better job of anchoring down to prevent the bull rush from having such a profound impact. It, too often when guys get into his chest, he's just getting driven back, you know, as if he's not even there. And even if that guy doesn't reach the quarterback, the bull rush has enough of an impact that the quarterback doesn't feel comfortable in the pocket any longer and has to vacate. I, he needs to be better. He's too big for that. He's too strong for that. I know he's stronger. I've seen him be better at preventing the bull rush from having the type of impact that I saw it have too often on uh, plays and watching tape. So what that says to me is he just wasn't prepared for it. He wasn't ready for the bull rush. He was looking for something else, and he got bull rush, and he wasn't prepared. Well, you need to be prepared, and he has to do a better job of anchoring down once he gets hit with the bull rush, even if he's not expecting it. So that takes us to our Washington comp for Mason Brooks. Confidential. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, shit. New, That's new, not new, good. New Ari Kwanjo. And if you're aware of Ari Kwanjo and what he did with Washington, I second that. Oh, shit. Is right. Uh, this is not a guy you want to be comp to. Now, in all fairness to Mason Brooks, first of all, I didn't see what they saw in Mason Brooks, personally, which is why I'm comping him to Ari Quandro. I see a lot of the same problems that Ari had, which is why he was in and out of the league very rapidly. I see a lot of those same problems with Mason Brooks. Here's the thing. In all fairness to Mason Brooks, I didn't see a ton of guard tape, which is what ultimately I think he's going to be at the NFL level. I don't think he's a tackle. I think he's a guard. And, and there wasn't a lot of that. I'm also basing uh, my decision – on him off of the fact that he went to Ole Miss and 
they immediately identified him as a liability, and he didn't start a single game at Ole Miss. He was is this heralded recruit that they got uh, from the transfer portal. They were excited. This guy was a preseason watch list player, and then he doesn't start a single game for them. Plays in every single game, but really only was on the special teams unit and, and a few snaps here and there sparingly at guard, but nothing to write home about, which is why he didn't get drafted. I mean, they pretty much told you he wasn't good enough. Whomever they had on the roster, they felt like was better than Mason Brooks. And so that scares me because he upped the level of competition and he wasn't good enough to get on the field. So, again, I want to see what they see in him, but I would have also liked to have seen more reps at guard because that's ultimately what I think he's going to have to play at the NFL level. But when it's all said and done, Ari Quandro lacked foot speed. He lacked athleticism. Um, He lacked the ability to you know, rebound after an early loss in a rep um, and recover. And Mason Brooks seems to be struggling from a lot of those things. And I will say this, and this is why I wish I would have seen more reps at guard. A lot of the things that ail him, you can hide inside. You can remedy some of those things by kicking him inside. Now, he's going to have to do some of the work to offset some of the athletic limitations, but you can hide a lot of those things inside as a guard. You can't hide them at tackle. So we'll see what ultimately happens with Mason Brooks. Um, Look, obviously they spent the money, which means they're intrigued by him. There's a lot of offensive linemen on the roster currently, and I will say this. I feel like a guy like Sadiq Charles is easily a candidate to get cut. Because in my mind, either Sadiq Charles is starting at left guard and he's getting the first opportunity to do so, or he's not making the football team. It could easily be a situation where either you're starting or you're off the roster for Sadiq Charles, especially if they see a guy like Mason Brooks is having an upside and feeling like, hey, we got Mason Brooks for four years. Sadiq Charles is on the last year of his rookie deal. Uh, We don't want to cut Brooks loose. There were a lot of teams that were after him. We had to pay the money to get him, and he's here. We like what we've seen throughout camp and in the preseason. Sadiq Charles is okay, but he's not great. I could see them choosing Mason Brooks over Sadiq Charles. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. If Sadiq doesn't win, outright win the left guard position, I could see a guy like Mason Brooks taking his spot. So, again, Brooks is going to have to do the work. He's going to have to impress in camp in order for that to take place. And Sadiq's going to have to take a step back. If those things happen, Mason Brooks could be on the roster come week one. But again, we will see. So that's going to do it for UDA, UDFA, confidential, Mason Brooks, another guy with a legitimate shot at making this football team on the back end of the roster. Stay tuned for more of this limited series. Look forward to chopping it up with you guys. Until next time, you guys have a good one. Network.